Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Kneifel here. It's Friday, I normally do a Friday reset. But instead, I'm gonna be doing something I promised my kiddos I would start. It's gonna be a short video, but that's okay. So, I promised my kids I'd start doing a read aloud on YouTube, that way they could um, maybe earn a few more AR points. And I also am absolutely obsessed with this book. Um, well, actually it's a series. It's called The Island Series. It's by Gordon Corman, who I think is an amazing, amazing writer. There's three books in this series. They're only around like 100 pages and they're really quick reads and they're so phenomenal. So I promised my students I would start reading them aloud just so if they wanna ever um, listen to the read aloud or um, follow along in their own book, they, are, they can. So that's what I'm gonna do today. It's only gonna be about 10 minutes to get started. But then I will continue reading till we finish this book, and then I will start the next book and the next book. This book level is um, uh, 4.6, and it's worth three AR points. And like I said, it's 100 pages. I should be able to get it done in a few videos. So um, feel free to join along with me for the Island series by Gordon Corman, book one, Shipwreck. Okay? All right. First, we're going to start on the prologue, okay? So, like, before the actual story. You can call it a preview, prologue, preface, whatever you want to call it. Prologue. Saturday, July 15th, 2010 hours. So, that's written in military time, 2010. So, that would be 810 at night, I think. I think that's 810 at night. For hot... Oh, my goodness. I'm already messing up. For a heart-stopping moment... The bow of the phoenix pointed straight up at the boiling black clouds of the storm. Then the wave broke in a cascade of spray and the schooner was headed down, plummeting into the trough. Shakily, she rightened herself and began the long climb up the next 30-footer. A streak of forked lightning silhouetted her against white water. She was two masted small she was two masted small for a schooner. Her deck wasn't much longer than the tallest of the waves. Her sails were down and secured, and she moved under engine power, steered gamely into the oncoming seas. Suddenly a flash of white. The mainsail began to rise. It was unthinkable. No vessel could survive such a storm-carrying sail. Pandemonium. Angry shouts from the deck. A desperate run for the hail yard. And then the brutal power of the storm filled the half-open sail with violent wind. The ship spun around and heeled over, its twin masts dipping dangerously close to the punishing swells. The next wave took the phoenix broadside. A torrent washed over the deck. There might have been a scream when the body hit the water. But the howl of the gale was all that could be heard. Chapter 1. Sunday, July 9th, 2140 hours. So that would be 940 at night, I believe. Luke Haggerty squeezed into the tiny bathroom and pulled the door shut behind him. Not the bathroom, he reminded himself, the head. Luke knew he'd been sentenced to this boat for the next month. What he didn't know was that it was going to be a never-ending vocabulary lesson. Not walls, bulkheads, not beds, berths. The kitchen was a galley, a room was a cabin, and who cared? Suddenly, pounding on the door, was it still called a door? What are you doing in there, growled the voice of Mr. Radford, the phoenix's first mate. Riding an opera? Let's go, Archie! Luke reached for his belt and bashed his elbow against the small stink sink. This bathroom head was a shoebox. Ow! More pounding. You okay, Archie? My name is Luke. Even as he said it, he knew it was a waste of breath. All the way from the Guam airport to the marina, Radford had 
leaned on the horn and cursed out Archie the truck driver, Archie the cop, Archie the pedestrian, Archie the cyclist, and even Archie the priest. By pressing himself into the corner and resting his left hip against the sink, Luke managed to finish up in the head. He hesitated. The flusher was some kind of pump. Instructions scribbled on a plastic-coated card tacked to the wall. Bulkhead. Open valve. Pump three times. Close valve. Pump three times. Duck. Duck? Why duck? Wham! He smacked his head on the low doorway on the way out. Watch your head, grunted the mate. Not at all better... Not at all better late than never. Do you remember to close the valve? Luke nodded. What's the big deal? The head flushes with seawater. Last thing you want to do on a bow is let seawater on board. That's a one-way ticket to the bottom. Luke felt queasy. Ever since he learned he was coming here, his uneasy dreams had been a catalog of all the ways to die at sea. Hurricanes, tidal waves, giant sharks, a collision with a super tankers, just to name a few. Now he had to add toilets to the list of things to worry about. Okay, he sighed. Where's my cabin? Radford brayed a laugh. You're standing in it, Archie. But this is just the... Uh... His voice trailed off. He had been about to say the hallway outside the bathroom... But in the dim light, he could make out four narrow bunk beds. Bunk berths? Two on either end and two mini dressers, all built right into the bulkhead. These are your quarters. Quarters? Repeated Luke, as in a quarter of a room. This ain't a luxury liner, Mr. Ratford suggested. Or Mr. Ratford shrugged. Archie, meet Archie. Lights out at 2200. He heaved himself up the companionway out onto the deck. Luke cast his eyes around. A tasseled head of sandy hair poked out from one of the upper bunks. What time is it? Sleepy eyes peered down over rounded, heavily freckled cheeks. 2145, Luke replied. I think that's a quarter to 22? The boy groaned and yawned at the same time. My system is totally messed up. I was on planes for 21 hours to get here. Tell me about it, said Luke, beginning to fill the narrow drawer with the contents of his duffel bag. Why Guam? It's supposed to be just us and the ocean, replied the other boy. No ports, no nothing. The brochure said we probably won't even see another boat for the whole month. He sounded mournful, like it was a death sentence. Luke applied a hip check to the overstuffed drawer. Nobody showed me any brochure. Really? The boy was surprised. How do you end up here? The horrible movie replayed itself in Luke's head as it had so many times before. The crack of the judge's gavel, the single word, guilty his mother's tears, and later in the judge's chambers, I'm reluctant to sentence a 13-year-old boy to Williamston, especially on a first offense. There's one other possibility. It's a program called CNC, charting a new course. Luke cast his roommate a strange smile. I'm a convicted felon. He held out his hand. Luke Haggerty. Wow. The boy's eyes widened. I'm only here because I fight with my sister. I'm Will, he added, shaking hands. Will Greenfield. Fight with your sister? Luke raised an eyebrow. So your parents had to put you on an ocean? So your parents had to put an ocean between you? Nah, she's in the girl's cabin next door. I guarantee you'll hate her. I should have been an only child. Luke laughed shortly. I am an only child. It doesn't help. If you don't have any brothers and sisters, your parents are always on your case extra. The lights flashed once and winked out. Except for a dim glow from a porthole, the cabin was in total darkness. Well, I guess I've decided to go to sleep, Luke said sarcastically. He established himself on the lower bed, bunk, berth, on the opposite side of the room. Uncomfortably, he curled up in the coolest spot he could find. 
For a few minutes, the only sound that could be heard was the creaking of the morning line, mooring lines and the soft lapping of water against the hall. Then, what felony? William asked. Luke laughed without humor. Not murder, if that's what you're worried about. But even as he said it, the voice of the prosecutor was ringing in his ears. Felony possession of a firearm. Come on, coaxed Will. I told you why I'm here. What was it? Breaking and entry? Vandalism? I know. Assault! That'll be my next felony, yawned Luke. If I ever get my hands on the kid who put that gun in my lock. All right, that was the end of the prologue and the end of chapter one. Like I said, it's a short video. I'm out of time. I got to go pick up my kiddos. Um, so I'll be sure to make a video soon of the next few chapters. Like I said, this is Island by Gordon Corman. It is, uh, well, it's the Island series. This is book one, Shipwreck. If you can get your hands on it and read it along with me, it is so amazing. Or just listen to me. Um, like I said, it's worth three AR points, and I'm excited to read it all with you guys. I hope you have a great day, great Friday, and hopefully I'll be reading again soon to you guys. Have a great day.